So I'm Lenin Shevtsov. Uh, here's my GitHub account. It's pretty simple. I guess most people should know me by that. So I've made some uh, gems. Headless is the wrapper for uh, the virtual frame buffer, or the wrapper for the virtual frame buffer in Ruby, which is used for um, acceptance testing. An obtrusive flash is uh, a thingy that passes uh, flash, the flash messages, the flash array uh, through your cookies, so you can uh, use it with uh, AJAX requests transparently. Pivotal Shell is a um, console client, uh, a command line client for uh, Pivotal Tracker. Well, you can know me for some of my contributions to other projects and from a blog or whatever. So you can just Google if you want more info. Um, so, yeah, I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> now it will be loud. Um, uh, making gems. So I guess in a room full of Rubyists, everyone knows what a gem is. And everyone uses them. Because it's uh, probably not possible to make a, a simplest Ruby project without a gem, or maybe I'm wrong. But we all use them. Um, so, um, but not many people write gems. And I say that you probably should do that. And the response to that, I, as I assume, would be like, what? Like, why should I do that? I have my salary. I have a nice uh, job. So why should I do jams? So maybe uh, you see you have some, you have two sites or some apps. And inevitably, there are some features that get copied because you are used to having them that way and you just copy them over to the new app. Or maybe you already have um, two apps and you see that uh, they uh, do the same thing but a little bit differently but it could be generalized and uh, made into a library. Or maybe you're solving some uh, problem that you think that other people should have or maybe uh, as Sven said, it's a niche problem and there's no library for doing it in Ruby. So in that case, well, you should get into the jam making business. Well, uh, before I became a Ruby programmer, I didn't really believe in open source. And because the tools to make uh, open source were, were pretty uh, uh, unsophisticated and, well, they were uh, not really easy to use. And Ruby changed all that. Um, so, which tools uh, are used to make gems? Well, you are using all of them already. They are Bundler, they are Git, RDAC, which is the documentation tool for Ruby. RSpec is the test suite, and well, whatever else. But uh, the point is, you're using everything that you need to create gems right now in your projects. There's no special tools or um, complicated software to learn. They are all there. So the benefits that you'll get uh, by releasing your code in the gem. Uh, first and foremost, uh, that will uh, loosen coupling between the modules of your software. And that is always a good thing. So you have some code which is, oh shit, I'm not speaking to the microphone. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. So um, uh, you have some code in your app that depends on other parts in your, of your app. And when you extract the code into a library, then you cut off those uh, connections and try to make the code more general. So it doesn't depend on the other parts of your app more uh, heavily. And thus, uh, your application becomes less coupled, easier to test, easier to understand, everyone's happy. As I said, you also reuse the code across projects, across your own projects, and I do hope you make more than one app in your lifetime, so it's obviously a benefit to you. Uh, you will probably, and I do hope so, uh, pay more attention to documentation in your gems. I'll 
a sail tail uh, a bit later, it's quite easy to do. You'll get a uh, free quote unquote quality assurance and plenty of complainers. There your gems, uh, gem has uh, issues, bugs, whatever. Works not as people expected. And this is the kind of thing that you will never get uh, working on yourself or in a small team. So people in the internet come up with such problems that you'll never just think of yourself. You'll uh, have much more networking between uh, programmers if you start writing gems. So GitHub, GitHub is like Facebook for programmers. Oh no, um, it's the cool Facebook or the cool Kentucky for you Ukrainian guys. So people uh, socialize there about code, about ev what everyone does. And obviously you learn fame and who doesn't like that? Uh, we all do. So that's why you should go into writing gems. So how is it, how is it done? It's not really more complicated than four simple steps. So the bundle command has a special uh, subcommand called gem, which prepares a, a, um, a skeleton for your gem, which uh, is almost ready to go to production to get released. So then you just uh, move the code from your app to, to, the, to the gem, and you reference the newly created gem from your gem file. So bundler, which is an awesome tool, it has a, uh, so when you uh, use a gem from Bundler, you say like gem, like um, Rails. And if uh, you need to reference a gem from a um, Git repository, you say gem Rails, uh, comma, uh, well, Git, hash rocket, something, some Git repository. Well, uh, you can also reference gems uh, from a source path and then Bundler uses uh, the code that's locally available without any um, versioning or else. So you just use the gem from um, your, from, well, from the directory that you have just copied it into. So you're good to go. You've done these things and uh, you can continue developing your application as you did before. Um, it had been not so simple to do with Rails because Rails is a complicated pile of uh, mess and there are parts of Rails that don't uh, react lightly when they are moved out of the project. So in Rails 3 uh, there was a thing introduced that co that's called Railties. It's a uh, way to inject your code into various parts of Rails like you can uh, inject your controller or your model or which is more interesting you can inject a rake task. So if uh, in Rails 2.3 to use rake tasks from uh, your gem, you had to have some source file in your project that included those uh, tasks in somewhere. So Rails 3 makes it possible to do that from your gem without copying over anything to the project. And Rails 3.1 introduced the asset pipeline, so now you can not even uh, avoid copy pasting code, but also avoid copy pasting your assets. So you can do some plugins to Rails that have some JavaScript, and the JavaScript is located in the gem, so it doesn't have to be copied into the app, which is awesome in my opinion, and really makes things simpler. Um, but uh, if you want to deploy the app or Anyways, uh, no, disregard that. So if uh, you want to publish the gem to make it available to other people, it's also really, really simple. Firstly, um, are you on GitHub, people? Well, I ask, uh, I ask everyone who's not yet on GitHub at the first possible moment to go and sign up there you can do that right now because GitHub is the place to be if you're a programmer, especially if you're a Ruby programmer. Why is that? Uh, because uh, pretty much most of the gems right now, most of the Ruby code is hosted on GitHub in one way or another. So if you want to participate or you want other people to participate, 
it just makes sense. But that's not all. So uh, you create a Git repository in your account, and then there's a major command that Bundler creates in that gem skeleton I talked about, which does the following foo. So it commit, it um, pushes your code to your Git repository. It tags the code with the version you have in your gem spec file, and it releases it to Ruby gems. So with one command, you do everything that's needed to get the gem to, well, into the world, so everyone can use it after you go break release, and anyone can publish a gem, a gem right now, because Ruby gems is pretty. It's an anarchy. There's as far as I know, there's no moderation. You can push whatever gem with whatever name, which is not taken yet, with whatever code uh, to Ruby gems, and well, it will be available. Uh, so you don't have to like get some membership or like uh, get approved by moderators. It's as simple as you have this idea, you implement it, and like. A half an hour later, it's on Ruby Gems, and you're writing a blog post about it so people can use it. it it's really, really simple. But um, the other case is when you don't want to publish your gems because uh, they are private, and you're doing them so you so they're using some proprietary technology, and you don't want people to. Uh, use them or get access to them. So that's not a problem. You can uh, use Bundler again to uh, get the gems from any private repository that you have in your team, in your company. And thus, the, you can uh, publish the gems inside your team and uh, no one finds out about it. But please don't do that. It's stupid. You should share your code. Uh, and in a project, it's not usually the code that's valuable to the client, but the product, oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to talk about that, so I gave a good talk, whatever. Um, there are other two things that go into writing a gem. So documentation is uh, half of the job of making a gem, and it's the simplest half because uh, there's uh, such a tool called RDoc. You are probably a user of RDoc from the uh, client side. But it's uh, simple to make RDoc documentation uh, because pretty much everything you have to do at the first uh, step is just put a comment line before uh, each class and each method and each uh, attribute in your source code. That's all. And RDoc generates the class documentation for you. Uh, just the same kind of documentation that you can see at, uh, for example, the Ruby core documentation, or I guess any other Ruby documentation site. And what's cool about it, that uh, the same uh, comments can be used to get uh, documentation on RDoc info, which you probably know about it, and it has a documentation for all the gems and all the uh, GitHub repositories, if I'm correct, uh, at all. So all the gems are documented on our doc info automatically. So if you create a gem, then you already have a documentation site. It's that cool. Uh, if you want to go uh, further and make some tutorial page, which you should, or some uh, demo page for your project. There's GitHub pages for that, which is a free service from GitHub that uh, makes it possible to create a site and release the site as simple as pushing to a Git repository. And um, so uh, you don't need to have hosting or uh, uh, your own server to get a home page for your jam. And the other half, so if you're counting, there are three halves to making a gem. The first half is the coding, the second is the accommodation, and the third is um, test. Um, uh, so testing a gem is uh, not very different from testing an app. It's just that you should do it and in more 
you should do it more than when writing an app because people depend on it. Uh, you can use any uh, tools you want, so mini test, uh, test the built-in, RSpec, whatever. Uh, Cucumber, I mentioned Cucumber especially because uh, Cucumber tests are uh, a fairly readable documentation. Uh, if you don't believe it, uh, check out the documentation for RSpec2 which is a, uh, just a set of Cucumber stories. And uh, yes, you should, you could, you must use Travis or other CI uh, with your gem because it makes you look cool and uh, chicks dig it. But in my opinion, it's not really a must. It's a should. A bold should, but a should. Um, another thing that you could do is uh, participate in some jam. So that's also simple. Sometimes you um, look at some jam. So with me, it was the LinkedIn jam. Uh, so I checked out the LinkedIn jam, and it uh, gave uh, us an escaping error. So uh, some uh, strings were passed to the API without being properly escaped. And now I opened the source code on GitHub. And I looked that the uh, requests are formed uh, just by concatenating strings, which is horrible if you do an API, if you do an API call. And then I went in and replaced all those, uh, all those uh, concatenation with uh, a proper XML builder, which does proper string sanitization. And then the uh, code got approved to LinkedIn, so it's now part of the gem. But I digress. Uh, what I wanted to say that it's uh, really easy to, if you don't like something in the gem or if you see a bug or a improvement, even if it's a couple of lines, uh, I think you should uh, do the following. So you go to GitHub, to the uh, gem page, you press fork, and you have a, your own Git repository with the gem and you can do anything with the Git repository. For instance, you can change two lines, push it, and then you can start using it right away uh, as soon as you push the code to it because Bundler makes it possible to use any Git repository as a gem source. So uh, when I uh, encounter such problems in my work, I fork the gem, I use it in the app, and I submit a pull request. Uh, pull requests in GitHub uh, if you're not familiar with them, is uh, basically a message that says that your uh, fork of the gem has something useful in it and the author should uh, get the, um, the changes to his own repository, which is easy because Git makes it so. So that's about participating. So that's all for my talk. Any questions? I don't know how much time do we have. So? We don't have time, so maybe uh, questions on after party? During after party. Okay? I, I agree with that. <laughs>